Good evening, traders. Welcome to our risk management session today. Um, we want to look into risk on risk of assets because when you when you're managing risk, you're not only looking at um, the stop losses and um, the take profits and how to manage the trade, but as well want to look at the type of assets which you're trading and what you're looking into in the markets based on um, the environment. So with me is uh, my colleague Robert. Hi, hi traders. Uh, this is Robert Mbogo from Tika. Uh, hope you'll have a great presentation. Let's look at uh, risk on Roro, as they call it, the risk on risk off. And let's let's determine where we are in the as investors in the in this market. Okay, cool. So let's first of all understand what risk off and risk on uh, sentiment is in the market. Um, I mean, sentiment is what is a uh, is the talk which is in the market, the current talk in the market is what you call the sentiment. Now, the risk on, risk off um, is where you're talking about um, simply the risk is on, yeah, or the risk is off. So just to understand very simply, you're talking about risk off is where you are not willing to take as much risk in the market, okay? When talking about risk on, it's like telling people, hey, um, Risk is on, so you can take the risk. To try to explain in a very simple way. So global economic patterns uh, influence the behavior of traders in the markets um, and the mood in the market uh, depends with the risk associated with the financial instruments. So risk sentiment is a general perception that traders and investors have about the risk in the generally in the financial instruments that are being traded. So risk on, risk, risk off uh, uh, sentiments, they shape the traders towards holding certain portfolios or dropping certain trades where they have in their assets. So during risk on environment, for example, the traders have appetite to risky assets in the market and they demand for the emerging market currencies and small cap stocks which rise. Because, um, you know, you're looking at the highest yield or maybe where you're going to find like a very big movement. And most of the times when you check on those um, exotics or those currencies that are from emerging economies, when it's time to trend to the downside or upside, then it can be a very big move. Okay, Because probably it will be a strong currency against a weaker currency and the move becomes big. I don't know what's your take on that, Robert. Yeah, 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 Matthew, that, that's true because, you know, the sentiment, uh, the investor's sentiment is bullish. Uh, they are, they are mm -hmm. looking at opportunities to make more money. You know, the, the assumption is that we've come from a market that was underperforming and now the economy, let's say, has, 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 uh, is pushing up. Uh, the stock market is kind of rising. And so m most of these uh, investors will come in as a trader. You'll also, if, let's say if you're looking at the stock market, then you're looking at small cap uh, stocks. You're looking at companies that are nowhere to be known. You, they, they are not household names. You know, they're not the Coca-Colas. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's a company that you're taking in huge risks. Uh, uh, they, they, and basically, in these cases, maybe you'll be looking at the management more because you really haven't found out their financial flows. You don't know how much uh, cap, uh, how, how their sales are going in, how their profits are coming in, but you're pegging these on probably uh, the recovery of the economy. If, if probably you look at the tech stocks, you remember the boom, yeah? The tech mm -hmm. boom. It's the yeah. same thing. Uh, like these companies came in and some investors decided, you know what, it's time for us to, to take hit, uh, risks on, on this whole thing, invest in these companies and the rest is history. So uh, this is a time when you're looking at exotics, you're looking at the rising economies, you're looking at, say, let's say uh, the Turkish Lira, uh, you're looking at the Brazil rail. So th these are times when you look at economies that uh, will, will give some good returns although they could be risky, but just like you said, uh, uh, you're able to take those risks because the economy is growing. Sure, sure. So risk on is like when you have positive sentiment in the market, people are positive to try out um, even new markets to put yeah. their money into uh, new stocks. And basically it's a positive mood 
to investing and buying and and and, and buying into the into the market, right? Yeah, true, true. Risk off is the opposite. This is when uh, people are cutting, uh, being cautious in the market. Yeah, mm-hmm. I want to move to safer assets. Now you 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 moving into defensive form of trading because yeah. Um, yeah, you don't want to dare the markets. You want to preserve what you have, and um, you have traders cutting down into maybe um, their portfolios in some assets while increasing on some other instruments. So traders retreat to safer assets. Do not expect that. Do not experience high changes in value due to uncertainty. You see, uh, most of the times, risk off um, will come during times when there is a lot of uncertain, uncertainty. Things can happen and you have um, a certain instrument losing value so fast, yeah? When the stocks are falling so fast, right? So it brings up uh, panic in the market. And because of the uncertainty, the fear of what might happen, and most probably the fear is that negative uh, um, impact is going to happen on that given financial instrument. So then traders tend to, or investors tend to be protective. So they shift to large cap stocks for the ones who are trading stocks and um, safe haven assets and commodities, which we'll be looking at examples in the next few. So what really indicates indicates, um, risk sentiment? Mm -hmm. Um, The direction of these indicators have a correlation with the risk in the market, okay? And here we're talking about the VIX, volatility index, the US government bond yields, comparison between the short term and the long term, the Japanese yen, because it's, big, it's considered as one, as, as a really um, risk off currencies, yeah? Um, for example, the, the VIX, the bonds, yeah. yeah, when you look at the VIX, let's talk yeah. about the VIX. When you look at the yeah. VIX, the volatility index. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When there is very high volatility in the market, um, the VIX, when, when the VIX is really trending, then it means there's fear in the market. Simply it's like the fear index. It's a yeah. fear index, yeah. yeah. It's a fear index. So if it's rising, then there is fear in the market. And mostly they will move opposite to the stocks. Yeah. Uh, if you can compare the volatility index with the S&P 500, when the fear index is rising, then most of, most, most of the time, or most likely you'll find that the stocks are falling. That's when the, the, the investors are turning a little bit risk averse. Okay. Like, like in the situation we are in, Matthew, where like uh, H1, uh, mm-hmm. S&P 500 has dropped 21%. That, that's a huge one. The last time we had that performance was 1970. Mm-hmm. So this tells you like uh, there are guys who are looking in and saying, hey, you know what, this is an alternative and they're getting into the VIX as, oppo- as opposed to S&P 500. Most probably. So I'm yeah. trying to pull out a chart on um, uh, S&P 500 so they can look at, at that uh, indication that in branch, the market. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I want to pull Jan- a weekly Jan- chart. Okay. Pull a weekly chart, just show it here. This is what we're talking about. Okay, looking at that chart, look at how it's really pulled back towards this um, general uptrend. Because generally, even if you have a fall in the stocks, it won't like keep on plunging all along. At some point, we'll have entries. Okay, so um, even as we're speaking about these these times, these hard times, look at this general trend uh, since 2009. It's been an uptrend, but at some points around um, 2020, around uh, 2018, we've had some plunges, no, no. a little bit of it, yeah. eh? right? And after that, the yeah. market takes yeah, off small quite flash fast. Crashes. Yeah, but around these areas, if you just research a little bit about the economic events which are happening, you realize that uh, um, there has been some panic in the market and realize uh, people are like selling off, getting off the stocks. But most likely, I don't know whether you've noticed this one, uh, Robert, that uh, mostly we have these uh, crashes after a very strong boom. Yeah, Yeah, flash crashes, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's interesting because it's more like a correction, yeah? Uh, mm-hmm. The market will always try and correct itself and before taking on a major bullish or bearish move. So yeah, uh, there's always that move. Uh, uh, you know, there's at times people say it's time for some people to take profit. Mm-hmm. 
uh, or take new opportunities to buy the dips. You know, so there are so many conversations around that whole thing. Uh, as a trader, it's up to you to, to realize what it is that works for you it's because some of these plunges become chaotic in the market. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm, 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 I'm looking at um, to see whether I can find out volatility index so you can compare and see how it's been moving relative to relative to that S&P 500. And we just picked S&P 500 um, arbitrarily, yeah. I don't know whether I'll find it. If I can get it, then the better. It's supposed to be uh, down there. Um, not really. This index. Yeah, it's here, it's here. Yeah. Let me check out, see whether they can compare. Let's see how the move was. Hoping to find some... Um, You've clicked yeah. US oil. Oh, it's US oil. No, it's supposed to be VIX. Uh, VIX, VIX. Yeah, oh, VIX thanks, the one thanks for that correction. Weekly, four hourly, I think I supposed to get a... Um, like background, let me see. It's going to come up. Let me use a line. Line will be better. So looking into this, um, you realize generally it's been on the rise, especially as from 2021. I want us to identify this trend here. <laughs> yeah. It's more of an uptrend since 2021. Yeah. And um, I want us to compare with um, the S&P 500 around the same, same time. So this is this is on a weekly on a daily chart. Let's check out what you can see on the S and P or US US five hundred. Look at what's up what was happening. It's a downtrend, right? Twenty twenty one weekly. Uh, that's monthly. Week, that's monthly. Yeah, let's go yeah. to weekly. Also, you can have a clear comparison. So since twenty twenty one, okay. Um, there was there there was I think. The VIX is a little bit um, a leading one, probably, because you realize there was this uh, rise and then later we had a very strong fall. So there's that sort of correlation that you can check out in these assets. Yes, yeah? I'm negative between the VIX and the S&P 500. Exactly. Yeah. So it's one of the indicators that traders can look at if you want to understand uh, the sentiment in the market. If the volatility index starts rising, um, a lot, and then you have the stocks starts taking a dip, then that's when this fear, fear setting up in the market, it's getting into risk risk off. And investors do not want to be caught up in a losing streak. True. True. Yeah, bond yields, uh, comparing both short term and long term. So um, with the bond yields, um, remember it's, it's more of the, the, the long term should be looking brighter. Than the short term, that's the comparison. The long term should be looking brighter than the short term for us to have um, a, an expectation of a strong performance in the in the in the stocks market. Uh, but if you realize that the short term bonds are rewarding more than the long term, then the future is a little bit bleak. So it's it's a comparison that also traders look at or investors look at to try and read the mood in in the market. Japanese yen as well. It's a very defensive currency and um, it can be used as an indication. I don't know whether you have something to say about this. Uh, uh, about the, the N is interesting because this year, the N is kind of falling off the safe haven uh, mm -hmm. classifications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at what has been happening in the market, uh, uh, there sorry, we are losing you a little bit. Uh, they've always, they've Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, my yeah. connection is unstable. Yeah. So I was saying uh, the Japanese yen kind of this year has been has been on a wild move. Yeah. It's fallen the lowest uh, for for quite some time, and I believe it's all it's it's a multitude of of, of reasons uh, away from the Ukraine and the Russian war. You're looking at the whole COVID situation. You're looking at the export market. More, more Japanese companies have branched out out of Japan, right? So they, they've gone to other markets. So the export, the export uh, payments that were coming in and the rising commodities, you can see at, at one point in time, the Japanese economy had a, had a deficit. So uh, right now, as we see the traditional safe haven, which is the dollar is the king right now. 
because uh, most investors are rushing to, to the dollar. So uh, the, the yen kind of, I think, is falling off as a safe haven, but uh, let's wait and see how, how the Bank of Japan handles the economy moving forward. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's no one situation that is permanent. These markets, things keep on changing yeah. every now and then, yeah? Yeah, and um, I don't know about this argument, but um, have you have you heard that some people were saying that um, you might have the the cryptocurrency, probably the Bitcoin becomes uh, get getting into uh, competing with gold. I don't know how that one is possible, Mainstream. but <laughs> I don't know. But things things can change. You never know. I also heard that, but uh, we can investigate and wait and see what happens. So things okay. change. Things change, things change. A, lo- a lot can happen in the world. So for us as in- investors is to look at key indicators, uh, for example, what's happening in the crypto market currently. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we have so many funders, so many crypto lenders who've, who've, who've called out insolvency. So uh, <laughs> the market is wild. I think mm-hmm. the whole COVID situation and the aftermath, the inflation that is uh, off the charts, then we, 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 we are just waiting for that whole recession move. And if recession is coming, then once again, risk off. We are headed exactly. to investor sentiment being bearish. And uh, that means uh, opportunities as, as traders, investors, we know like we're looking for opportunities where we can maximize. And Spot on. They will, they will present themselves. The market always presents the opportunities for us. Yes, spot on on that. So um, like, like we've just checked out there, um, Rising of fear index causes sell-off in the stock market. It signals investors cutting off their risk portfolios. And when you have um, the fear index falling, then it's, it's the start of the booming of stock markets and investors try to venture into buying stocks. And uh, it's an indication of the market calming down and the uncertainty is reducing as we get back to normalcy in terms of the economic um, environment. So... Something else we look at is the benchmark, the government bonds. Yeah, so I didn't pretty much get the uh, a, a graph or a chart to display this one, but generally um, we have a normal curve or the flat yield or decreasing yields, and this one it can as well um, show where are investors moving towards. Right, so if you have a normal curve, a normal curve is where it's, it's a steady rise of the bond yields. And that is an indication of the strong economic growth. And of course, you know, with economic growth comes inflation, but um, not really aggressive. Okay. So it's, you, we should know, or you should know that um, economic growth comes with inflation, but there's that inflation level, which can be tolerated in the economy. If it's accelerating far beyond the acceptable levels, mostly for those advanced economies, it's supposed it's 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 uh, said to be acceptable around two percent. But if it starts accelerating beyond that, then uh, um, it starts alarming the central banks uh, to start controlling. That's what's happening currently: rising bond yields, really going high and high. Last time I checked, it was around three. I don't know where it is right now. Uh, maybe we can um, check for some time. But it's yeah. still rising, and the inflation is going high. So it's overheating, right? So in such a situation, then it means that, you see, you see the yields, what you're looking at in the market and what's making you to go into the markets is profits. Returns, so, yeah. Yeah, the returns. If there are higher yields with the bonds and they feel a little bit safer, then that's where you go and you start, and then traders will start dropping the stocks. Yeah. And that's what's currently happening. So when you realize that the bonds are, are the bond yields are going higher, and um, then that's when it's a signal that investors are shifting towards uh, going to buying government uh, securities because they're a little bit safer. Yeah. It's more of safe haven. Because it's it's considered that uh, the <coughs> probability or the likelihood of the government defaulting on um on 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 their securities is low. Low. Right? It's really really low. You can't rule out uh, the possibility, but it's really really low because yeah. of course you're looking at a government like a U.S. government. It's 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 a superpower and a strong economy. That um, if you would not think of that kind of um, a government falling, yeah. So. It's more of like 90, above 
that you you will get that uh, pay once the maturity comes. So that's that's for the normal curve, and and for the flat yield, I mean you you it's like um, something boring. Uh, the, the long term projections are um, not really promising, and uh, in the short term and the long term, the growth projections are uncertain. So the market is boring at that time, okay? And it's more of needs the more incentives or uh, something to, to bring in interests from the investors and even traders. Decreasing yields, now you have slow future economic growth and um, you're talking about the short-term yields now being so high as compared to the long-term yields. So it's, it's more of a signal of a bleak future. And, um, it also can help signal the sentiment in the market. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for the investors. Yeah, so it's another indication you can check out for on the government bonds, and the mostly uh, used, uh, um, the mostly the mostly used um, benchmark bond yield, the US ten year. I don't know if I can find it. Um, Bond yield. I don't know if I can find it in the chat. So we look at it. Um, let me check quick first if you can find it. Uh, US Treasury. Mm -hmm. uh, trading. Let me, let me check out on this app. Allow me to use the uh, trading view. Of course, it's, yeah. it's an app that most of us use. Yeah. Right. We check out how it's proceeding. So currently, it should be rising and rising. Okay, and if you can compare it with the stocks, you, you realize that they, they have like more of a negative correlation. Correlation, yeah. Yeah, let's check out just in a second. I want to share it. So it's one indication that you can look out for to know what's the sentiment in the market, what you're expecting. So these indications, obviously you also need to uh, be watchful of what the markets are saying as well. What are the people saying? Um, check out on the fundamentals. Well, that's why you get this information, not only uh, getting stuck to technicals, because, I mean, we have traders who say that I'm a technical trader and I don't need to go to the fundamentals, but they are very important because that's where you get um, to understand. This is the gold spot. Let me remove this one. I want to, to add... I don't want to compare, no. Let me just search for the US sitting here. US here, government bond yield. Fair. So currently, let me use a higher time frame like daily. We see what's happening. Yeah, it's been rising, you see. Yeah. It's been rising. And um, it's really interesting. For example, in June. 15th June, it reached uh, a high of um, 3.4449. Okay. So we can try to compare this one with um, the S&P 500 and C. Okay. US and C, by the way. Let me just use the one which is here, S&P 500. It should be, it should be uh, inverse. It should be inverse. If we check clearly. Yeah. S&P has it been should be dropping. Inverse. Since yeah. January. It has been dropping. If you check out yeah. that one clearly. But look at the government bond yields. Been rising. What it indicates here is that uh, tra traders or investors are more of trying to buy into what is yielding, uh, which what is higher yielding as compared to cut as compared to the stocks, which are a little bit uh, not uh, performing well. Why? Because they are trying to cut off the risk of the falling. Uh, 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 stock markets, right? The, fall, the falling performance in the stocks. And um, also we can give a little bit comparison with gold now that we've, we've, we've decided to look at it. When you have a rising 10-year um, yield, then of course for the gold traders, you can check out this one. Let's, let me just give this one as a, it's a bonus. It's a bonus. Look at this one, eh? <laughs> so XAU, I don't know which one we pick, but XAU USD, this one. Also, it's likely to be inverse. 
almost taking almost the same shape as uh, as the stocks, right? I don't know what is shifting as well because when we have high inflation coming up, gold is supposed to be ticking higher, but yeah. things change. Things change just like we were saying before. And the yeah. market is interesting this time around. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> totally Nothing different. is permanent in these markets. Uh, so, yeah, you have something to add, Robert? No, no. I was trying to think of, you know, uh, the 2008 financial crisis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here you were thinking COVID is coming in. It's supposed to, you know, uh, the yen is supposed to be a safe haven, you know, all things constant, right? And then all of a sudden, then the market uh, is showing us a totally different side so once again the change in market as, as you said like the market is never constant yeah uh, so yeah. things things will just have to change but um so i think need... i think i think there are um various uh, uh, global um global events which have happened and they are a little bit disturbed um the balance that we've seen like for instance remember there's a time when there has been talks the, the ukraine russian crisis right has been talks of um changing of um uh, some commodities the pricing of some commodities the benchmark benchmark price for some but sorry the benchmark currency for some commodities and, yeah. you, know, and you know how that one can disrupt right yeah. um yeah. <laughs> the, the power balance in terms of the, the currencies the the petrodollar huh? to rubble. Exactly. Rubble, Something like rubble. that. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, there has been quite interesting events happening this year, a lot of crisis. And um, we sometimes when you have a lot of noise in terms of the these events, the, the long uh, uh, normal or the long norm which has been there has, of course, we're expecting a different... Uh, abnormal behavior. That's why maybe we have uh, those, uh, we can't relate um, the traditional relationships which have been there. Okay? Yeah. Let's yeah. see how things go. All right. So risk of assets. Now, which assets can you look at, um, especially at this time, at times of risk off? Yeah. They are also called safe haven instruments considered to be safe to trade, especially in risky market conditions. And the factors you consider for safe haven currencies include um, economic growth, political stability. You're talking about liquidity in the markets. Examples of defensive currencies um, in times of negative sentiment, which is the risk of talking about USD, Japanese yen, uh, the, the Swiss franc, the euro. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so, just like you said, Robert, um, yeah. it's no longer one currency that is being looked into as a safe haven. Remember yeah. here, we're looking at the political stability, economic growth, liquidity. Which which countries uh, manifest or show strong political stability such that if you hold on to their currency, then of course you've got a little bit more um, assurance of keeping the value of your assets. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and still the traditional ones are still um, not off the table because you can see we have the, the US dollar and it's quite clear from the USD uh, index, the DXY. Maybe you can check it out on the, on the trading view. It's really, really very strong, uh, very strong. following the rise of interest rates and also, uh, I don't know, with, with, with um, the demand for the dollar. Uh, Swiss franc, euro, still the same thing. Okay. Yeah, uh, the, the, the Swiss franc is more stable uh, as mm -hmm. compared to the euro. You remember, like you, you've talked about the whole, you know, uh, Russia Ukraine war. Mm -hmm. uh, the euro is really affected by the rising prices in oil and uh, gas. So uh, the euro is, uh, is no longer, it, it's, it, it, the euro is behaving just like the yen. You know, there, there's so much at play, the commodities, yeah, that are affecting, look at, look at what is happening in Germany right now. Uh, there are so many, you know, almost some, some protests because of the high, high prices of commodities. So, and we know when Germany coughs, then the whole European Union will definitely, uh, the, the, the traditional safe haven, the dollar, uh, 
Yeah, it's raining right now. Uh, Switzerland, basically, we, we know their banking sector has been stable. Their politics is okay. Uh, we know we know the Swiss bank uh, is in charge, is, is, is just trying to rein in on, on the interest rates. So uh, uh, there, there's a lot at play. There's, sure, sure. There's a lot at play for investors and uh, uh, it's an interesting time, really interesting. Yeah. So um, with those uh, currencies... Gold, gold keeps running. Yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry for cutting off. I see you were, you were a little bit intermittent. <laughs> I had no, as no, if you, no, had, no. you had kept quiet. Eh? Uh, I was looking at gold, yeah. And mm-hmm. of course... Uh, this has been the traditional safe haven, you know, for most investors. If you look at countries like India, you'll be surprised to know that these guys store most of their wealth in gold. So uh, uh, gold gold is really interesting to look at right now. Uh, in as much as uh, the, current, the the economy is, is, is unreliable right now. But mm-hmm. moving forward, let's see. Let's see how it plays out. Uh, have you been able to pull up that uh, dollar index, DXY? No, I've not. I've not checked it out yet. Eh? Um, but but when it comes to gold, um, it's 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 oh, plunging. Okay, okay. It's plunging despite the kind of risk of sentiment we are in, and um, the, the, the main <laughs> effect is is because of the rising the, the strong dollar and the rising interest rates. So again, um, things change. I think the advice that we'd want to give to traders is look at the sentiment in the market, the conversations getting along, the fundamentals which are being pulled by various, um, uh, um, by the central banks, for instance. You might be in the risk of sentiment, but again, the actions that are being taken by the central bank and, 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 and um, the situation at hand might also affect, might offset the traditional thinking that when you are in a, where we are in a risk of a type of a sentiment, there is an automatically there will be a buying or or, or a, a strong trend of a traditionally believed to be a financial instrument. That's what's happening with gold right now. Actually, it has broken a very strong trend line up trend which has been holding for quite some time the daily trend it's it's been broken to the downside and we don't know when that one might be might, might be resuming but traditionally it's been known as a safer than asset yeah and um could be could be something that someone can look at so uh when it comes to stocks um let's not leave it out as well we have non-cyclical companies these are like the consumer staple retailer companies in food and beverage. i think you touched on this one from the beginning robert um and um household product retailers uh, consumer staple yeah. stocks yeah Procter and gamble for instance and um utility stocks water and electricity see these are the products uh, these are companies that produce uh products that you cannot stay without you can't exactly. stay without electricity that those are utilities you 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 cannot stay without um even energy by the way you can't stay without energy look at how um things are going haywire now because of um just a little uh, uh, hiccup in the energy sector right so um these are these are instruments based on uh companies that you can't stay without their products. Procter & Gamble, they sell, uh, is it um, um, household, is it household products for cleaning and a lot that are consumed by households on a daily basis. Yeah, food and beverage, products and retailers. So at times when the economies are not performing well or uh, during the risk of, you want to go to those stocks that are a little bit defensive that you know, you, you know people will still keep their demand yeah that's on the side of stocks all right now how to trade during the risk of sentiment this is a time you don't want to expose yourself a lot you want to be conservative a little bit you want to preserve what you have 
you are fearing losing a lot of value within a short time. You want to wait a little bit up until uh, the markets can go back to normal, but you don't want to stay without trading. So how do you um, try and wade through or swim through that negative, uh, uh, that time of negative market sentiment or panic in the market? Uh, you know that during those times, these are the characteristics. The markets are very volatile, moving very fast, swinging high, swinging low, spikes. Yeah. <laughs> you just check out in a one minute spike and it's like 100 pieces. <laughs> really interesting. Yeah. Risk management. Uh, basically, in summary, it's all about risk management here. Risk you're management. Taking care of the underbelly. Yeah. yeah you're so you're, you're looking at the you look- your risk management. You look at the market where there is um, a, a lot of slippage, both on, um, on 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 the orders. If you're executing a trade and the market is moving quite fast, then it might be entered at a place, at a price uh, that you did not intend. Why? Because the, the price which you are intending to enter at is no longer available. No longer the available price, yeah. Yeah, so just like you said. So, so, yeah, so your entry becomes the next available price. Exactly. It's no longer on the Not table, so you have to get uh, filled in on the next uh, price levels. And the, uh, the answer is risk management, just to say there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the only way. Yeah, take us through the risk management. Uh, actually, you know, the, the, uh, it's interesting that we covered this topic last time on risk management also. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, this is where, like as traders, you're making sure that, of course, before you determine what trade setup you're taking, you must really make sure that you know how much you're ready and willing to lose. And also now mm-hmm. you're taking care of the slippage. Uh, you could, uh, this does not just affect the stop loss. It, it also affects your take profit. Now, in most cases, uh, slippage, most people have experienced slippage in stop loss, you know, because there's more money in, in your in your account, uh, more than the planned. If it was 50 pips, then the trade closes at 60 pips and you're like, hey, it's my day. So basically, I, I think at this point in time, uh, risk of markets, the sentiments, uh, we are bearish, uh, like you, you're just being defensive. You're protecting whatever it is that you have, but making sure that, you know, at least you're going into the market to get some return out of that market. So this is where like you're looking at situations like you're hedging your positions to make sure that uh, uh, if, for, for example, you're having uh, trades that are running in red, then you have to make sure that you're looking at opportunities to, to of the losses. And of course, there's the diversification. This is where probably uh, you have more cash. Uh, you, know, you, you, you sit on your cash and maybe look at opportunities to, to have that cash ready just in case of anything in the market. So basically, as traders, we know your number one job is not just even to trade. You're a risk manager first. So make sure that when you're coming into the market, uh, your risk parameters always, this should apply at all cases, but mostly during risk of uh, sentiments when, when basically the market mm-hmm. So um, yeah. that's, that, that's great. I was just flashing the, I'm just trying to display the US 500 role and um, just try and explain what hedging is. Um, you see, if you look at this chart here, you realize all along since 2008, we've, we've had dips in this market. But all along, after very str- after dip, then we have a strong rally. After dip, you have a very strong rally. After dip, you have a strong rally. So then um, when you talk about hedging is where you're holding a position, you're net long, right? Or you're long on this um, financial instrument, which is S&P 500, because generally stocks will perform well uh over and over there will be growth so then let's say for example someone was holding a long position up this point but then it reaches a point um it comes at this time now where the stocks are tumbling but then you're still in the market but you don't want to you want to protect yourself from the current uh bleeding so then you take a short position but then you have to be very careful to exit at some level 
Yeah. That's what we're calling hedging, right? Or maybe taking a position in, in another um, instrument, which is known to have a certain correlation with that specific on which you're trading. So um, that's what to look out. That's how to trade during the risk off. Or for the risk on, um, this is when we have a positive sentiment in the market. We are expecting growth. We're expecting good performance. We don't have crisis in um, hitting global uh, headlines. So, of course, depending on the trader's risk appetite, you can trade risky assets to maintain uh, 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 and try to, to, to look for bigger returns. Okay, So it's advisable to have a diversified uh, portfolio. However, um, because it's, it's, it can also turn disastrous if you, if, if you just have um, a one type of asset, you invested heavily on one type of asset or one sector, because also um, you can have very big moves, right? And if they're performing negatively, then of course they affect you as well, because it's just like the way we say, do not put all your eggs in the same basket, yeah? So have a diversified portfolio during risk on times as well to tap on the returns from uh, various um, various sectors um, in the financial markets. Um, when you look at the currencies, of course, you can move to miners now and exotics. And these ones can pull very big moves, can be very rewarding. Yeah, Very, very. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I remember there was a time I was trading the Mexican peso. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, 2016. Back then, uh, uh, I was under a mentor in the US. Uh, who, so we were in a group of uh, some US guys and some Mexicans. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was caught up in the whole vibe of trading the peso, just like the man, you know, hey, my friend, it was during the, the US election campaign. <laughs> mm -hmm. At one point in time, I was positive uh, 500 pips on USD MXN. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, we were trading as a team. You know, you know when you're starting out, you tend to be in all trading groups, yeah, <laughs> trying to find which 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 signal will play out. So uh, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I am my ten. So we we're I'm losing like, we're losing you. I, I think I'm having challenges with my network, Pole. Uh, so it, it was a presidential debate. And mm -hmm. I hadn't even taken that into consideration when Trump tend, tended to, to be a winner. You know, all, almost everyone in 2016 thought, uh, uh, what's her name again? Uh, Clinton will be winning. But then, you know, uh, Trump pulled a good one. So you can be sure uh, the Mexicans, uh, the peso took a hit, huge hit. And uh, <laughs> now, now that, that's the risk when it comes to to trade in uh, exotics. Exotics it's, can be it's, wild. It's always, always interesting when you're speaking from experience. That's well, hey, it's hey. really interesting, yeah? It's interesting. But, but, there's um, also the lira. You remember Turkish when Turkey, lira. Uh, when, when uh, they wanted to overthrow the president, when the military went out to the streets and people, you know, resisted. Uh, the military tanks had to go back. And the sorry, we, we like losing survived. you. survived at that point. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the leader also took some moves. So there's a risk that comes with trading exotics, and this is something I've been telling my my uh, uh, my people here in Tika that mm -hmm. in as much as you going. In a, mm -hmm. In as much as you're enjoying the, the, so, the, the thrill of trading the exotics eh? and the good returns, eh? you need to be careful, right? You know, like the European Union, like we saw uh, Boris, uh, he resigned and nothing happened to the pound. <laughs> Imagine that happening in, let's say, ZA in South Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, so... <laughs> it's interesting. Once again, we, we always insist, and I think Matthew, we've insisted on this, always observe risk management anytime in the market. Uh, it's that, really that important. Like, really important. Uh, yeah, risk management. It's the holy grail of trading. 
sure. So um, check out the, 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 during risk off, you don't want to play around with the exotics, but during risk on, you can go and spot opportunities on those exotics. And when they pull out moves, they can be very big moves and profitable. But it's always good to have the risk management and protect your profits earlier. If you had perfect, pr- protected the 500 peeps uh, <laughs> that you had, well, <laughs> it could have been in uh, some good money. We knew, we knew Clinton is winning, yeah? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> You can't be sure until all things happen. So um, when you go to the stocks, yeah. um, look at the momentum stocks because they can rise faster in short term. And talking about small cap stocks, yeah, um, cyclic stocks that perform during economic expansions as well. So small small cap stocks, when you go to look at uh, smaller companies, especially small tech companies, which are more mm. likely to uh, spring up very fast and be rewarding. And here you're talking about, um, I don't want to specifically point any, but... Um, Think think about companies that have just come up and risen so fast. The ones like TikTok, yeah. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. I'm not I'm not the, recommending the any, industry. but it's it's been here <laughs> for quite a short time, and right now it's it's like a talk of um this is like a global talk. It's happening, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's hitting headlines uh, around um uh, big media. Yeah, the same thing is. If we were to look at something that happened, mm-hmm. the same thing with Zoom. Yeah, the one that Zoom we're using will, here, right? Yeah, the Zoom we're using right now at one point in time until COVID came in and boom. Now imagine a guy who had invested in, in Zoom uh, with, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't know COVID is coming, but they, they looked at the projection. This is a small, this is a startup. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe in the future of their technology. And then all of a sudden, this COVID and everyone is shifting to Zoom, and you know they made their probably hundred ten percent return, hundred you know mm-hmm. uh, more than a hundred percent return and walked away. I'm sure. So yeah, that, and that's so what... also there's the cyclic sectors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's just basically trying to shift with the mood of the market. If 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 you realize that. Um, the the people are not people are really getting uh, risk averse there is uh, like a bleak future there is um no promising growth you're hearing about recession coming so traders you would tend to look at um large cap companies which are known to be more stable right and um that's how you're going to put your your your, your money when it comes to times when um uh, the the, the future is bright. There is less crisis, um, good performance in terms of the economic growth, good control uh, in terms of uh, the inflation and the rates of growth. Then looking to companies that are coming up and are likely to be to perform better even in the future. So let's let's just recap, Robert, with all that talk which we've had about the risk on, risk off, and the currencies to look into the commodities to look into um, stocks. So then what are the action points? What are you going to look into as a trader uh, um, during times of various uh, market sentiments? So number one, you need to know risk profile so that you're able to shift with sentiments in the market. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. What's your risk profile? Right, and in this case, you're looking at your your portfolio. What are you holding? Are you a gold trader? Um, do you like trading on exotics? Do you like trading on 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 these uh, major currency pairs? Right, when when it comes a time when there is a um, good performance in the economy, there is no panic. Then probably you may not want to stick to these currencies that are really known to be stable. You want to um, take the thrill to a currency like lira. Check out like the Mexican peso, like you mentioned. Look at a currency can give you a good move, and you can make some money, right? So look at the risk profile, and then check out the risk sentiment. Where are you going to check the sentiment? Watch the news. Check out the economic calendar. Read a little bit of uh, um, the commentaries on. Um, uh, on, on check even the sentiment, uh, the news that we have on the FX PESA the analysis session, you can find the sentiment analysis there and news from the Dow Jones, right? And it's really, really very important. Be conservative when trading risky assets. Uh, 
Very um, yeah, yeah. And um, this one goes to the position which you're taking in the market and um, your stop loss, right? Mostly, if you're looking into a very risky asset, you want to take a very small position and then have a measured risk, right? That's not the time to take very big lots. Okay. Another approach you want to take is um, follow the global events in the Forex market. I think I've mentioned that one. And um, where are you following them? Check out the economic calendar, read deeper, listen to what the traders are saying, and um, you're going to get the highlights. Listen to what uh, these analysis events that we're doing, uh, uh, what we are saying. For example, we have the David Madden always speaking about uh, scanning the markets. A time like now, I think on Thursday, we also have um, um, Rufus doing uh, the US market open. That's why you get these events. Watch out for this news somewhere, uh, anywhere else that you can get information. It's going to be very helpful. So as a, trading, as, as a trader, I think the word here is be dynamic on your trading strategy to suit different market sentiments. Do not be stuck with um, only one concept because the market itself is dynamic. Yeah, right? it is. It yeah. is change is really constant in our business, you know. We've discussed yep. that uh, and highlighted that you know the yen is not performing as we expect it. Mm -hmm. The gold is not performing as we expected it to, to be performing. So yeah, make sure that you uh, uh, observe this is something we'll keep on in, insisting, guys. Risk management, risk management, risk management. That's the only thing that will will keep you in this game. That's for sure. And again, things are likely to shift and the shift and the, the dynamism is what brings the opportunity which you have in the market. If things were very constant and not changing, this could be a very boring market, right? Old. So Old. that's where we are. So um, checking out on the comments that we have here, um, Emperor Traders, uh, Dune, Masood, John Mwangi, hi, all of you. And yes, of course, Masood is saying that you're waiting for the set 19th. I don't know why 19th, but I think you're talking about uh, the landmark um, decision on the interest rate that you're waiting to hear, right? The rate decision for the US, yeah. of course. So it'll be a big one. Everyone is Fed. waiting for Fed, yeah. FOMC, although we know that um, the events that have been happening all around are kind of building a very strong case for the for Fed to hike. keep on raising the rates, yeah. yeah what we don't is know is... What we don't know is it's what we don't know is is it going to be a 0 0.5 or or is it going to be a 0 0.75? We don't know. Let's wait and see. Uh, but remember, 1.0. Uh, well, that that would be so high. It would just throw the economies into recession <laughs> quite fast. I don't know. But let's wait and see. <laughs> never say uh, never. Uh, so okay. Many possibilities. All right. So. Um, Another comment that I'm seeing here, quite interesting. Um, thanks for reminding us on the of the connection. I mean, um, sometimes challenges with uh, the connection. It's, it's it's sometimes there's some some challenges. Um, we we'll work on that. All right. And Masood is learning a lot from this live. Thank you so much. We're also Karibu. happy to be with you here. All right. And um, I think up to that point, um, let's meet in other sessions. You can follow. Us on our social media, follow FX Pesa, check, check out on the Twitter. And uh, there's a lot of announcements which we push there. Check out on Facebook, Instagram. All right. That's why we announce a lot of events which we are doing and any other goodies coming up. And for me, um, I'm speaking with you from Nakuru, yeah, at Tower One. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, for Twitter, it's at Matthew underscore Kabere, which is M A T H E W underscore. K A B W E R E, okay, both on um, Twitter and Instagram. Robert, yes, uh, you can find me in Tika, Maisha Heights, that flow. Uh, on social media, you can find me Mambogo Junior, Twitter, Junior is JR, and on Facebook, uh, Junior JNR. So, uh, thank you for participating in this amazing, amazing presentation. Let's keep doing it. We are investors, we are traders. Whatever it is your risk profile is, as Matthew has said, make sure that you're on top of the game. Cheers, have a good one. All right, thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye. Support.